Hello, Miss Miklos here with our final lecture of Chapter 3. And today we're going to be talking about linear inequalities once again, which we know we did last chapter. But today we're going to work with systems. So we're going to start by doing a quick review of number 1. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that particular problem. So we have y is less than 2x plus 1. So I know my slope is 2 because this is in slope-intercept form. My m value is whatever the x coefficient is. My y-intercept is 1, and we learned that means we have an ordered pair of 0, 1. So I'm going to go up to 0, 1. A slope of 2 means I'm going to go up 2 and to the right one, or I could have gone down 2 to the left one. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a dashed line, and the reason why it's dashed is because it says less than. It does not say equal to. Final thing, I'm going to use 0, 0. If I put 0, 0 in, I get 0 is less than 2 times 0 plus 1. Is 0 less than 1? Yes. So what that means for me is that I am going to shade everything on the side of 0, 0, Okay, and we're going to shade super dark here. And what this is actually telling us is that everything in the shaded region is a solution to this particular system. So I could choose any of these ordered pairs and substitute them in. Okay, number two is once again in slope-intercept form. This time my slope is negative 3. My y-intercept is 1, which once again means 0, 1. So I'm going to go to 0, 1. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and over 1, or I could have gone up 3 to the left one, and I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. This time my line is solid because it says equal to, and I'm going to plug in 0, 0 again. Okay, if I put 0, 0 in, I get 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3 times 0 plus 1. Is 0 greater than or equal to 1? No. So that means that I would shade everything on the opposite side. So since 0, 0 is over here, I'm shading the other side. Okay, so that's a quick review of what we did last chapter. Um, if you need more help on that, please go back to that lecture and just re-watch that. Because right now we're going to move on to what our new stuff is going to be. And that's going to be finding the the solution to systems of linear inequalities. So just a reminder to you guys, um, we want to go ahead and shade the overlap. That means that I'm going to look and see where do these two systems, where do the, their shadings overlap, and I'm going to shade that section really dark. So if you notice, these are really the ones from problems one and two, but let's just pretend like we don't know that. Okay, my slope for that first line is 2, my y-intercept was 1, so we went to 1 and then we went up to and over 1. That line was dashed. Okay, and we found out when I substituted 0, 0 in that I was going to shade on this side. Okay, now my second line, my slope is negative 3, my y-intercept is 1. So I'm going to start at 1, and I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and, and over 1. Or I could go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And this time we have a solid line. We saw this time, and I'm going to shade in a different color. That 0, 0 did not work, so we shaded over here. Okay, now, the one thing that we notice is that the shading overlaps in this region, so that is where I'm going to have to shade super dark. Okay, so I'm going to choose actually black here, and I'm going to shade everything where my shadings overlap. And what that means is in this region right here, these are the values that work in both of these two inequalities. Okay, things over here don't work in either of them. Things right here only work in the second inequality. Solutions over here only work in the first inequality. All of these are solutions to everything in that system. So this is what our answer would look like. 
We need to be very, very clear to shade very dark where we think the overlap happens to make it evident that those are our solutions. Okay, so moving on here to number four. Number four, we have standard form. So our slope for that first one, I'm going to just use the opposite of A over B. So I get negative one, and my y-intercept is zero. So I'm going to start at zero. My slope is going down one to the right one, and I know this line is dashed. Okay, this time, I cannot substitute in zero, zero, because it is part of my line. So I might try, like, one, one. If I substitute that in, one plus one is two, two is greater than zero. So that means that I'm going to shade everything on this side. My second line, my slope once again is negative one. This time though, my, my y-intercept is two. We have another dashed line. This time I can substitute in zero, zero. Okay, so I'm going to put zero, zero in. Ooh, that yellow is lovely. Okay, zero plus zero is less than two, so that tells me that I'm shading everything over here. Now, if we look at where the shading overlaps, that is everything that is between these two lines. Now, I want you to notice these two lines are parallel, but we have solutions this time because they are inequalities. So if I wanted to double check, I could substitute any of these ordered pairs into both of these inequalities and make sure that it made a true solution in both of these inequalities. So our problems so far have not been that tough, but I'm letting you guys know what I really don't like about this is if we look, I don't like how messy our graphs look. Now if you guys are very visual, this is probably the best way for you to use and that's fine. Um, but I actually prefer to do it a slightly different way, which I'll show you on number five here. So number five, the first thing I'm going to do is actually rewrite these so that the, they are in, there we go, my x is a little rough, but I want them to be in standard form so that x should be first. Okay, with that first equation, my slope would be negative one, and my y-intercept is two. So I'm going to begin at two, and go down one to the right one, and I know that this line should be solid. Now this time, when I go ahead and substitute in an ordered pair like zero, zero, I get zero is less than two, which is a true statement. So what we could do, I could shade everything over here, or what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, let me choose a better color, I'll use this pretty blue. I'm going to draw just a dashed line on that side, and that's just indicating to myself that I'm going to shade on this side of the line. Okay, second line, my slope this time is a positive one, and my y-intercept is two. So from two, I'm gonna go up one and over one. This line is solid. That's not a very good line, but we'll pretend. By the way, I'm very skilled at drawing straight lines on the board. I'll have to demonstrate sometime. Um, but back to the problem. Um, our y-intercept was 2, our slope was 1, and if we look at is rising from left to right. So let's just think about this for a second. If 0, 0 works, that means my final solution is just going to be over here because that is where they overlap. If 0, 0 does not overwork, not overwork, if zero, zero does not work, this is going to be my solution because that is where they would overlap. So I'm going to put in zero, zero again. And I get zero is less than two, which is a true statement. So I'm going to draw a dashed line on that side. And I can clearly see then that this is where my dashed lines kind of form a V or where they overlap. So I'm going to draw everything over here. Now, if I wanted to double check once again, I would substitute one of these ordered pairs like zero, zero into both solutions, make sure that it works. If you guys prefer what I did in number four, that's great. Go ahead and graph, go to town, 
That's good. Okay, I'm going to use this method from now on, though. Here's number six, and now we're going to skip number six just because I don't think we necessarily need to do that one. We're going to focus on seven and eight now. Okay, in my opinion, number seven is as tough of it as it's going to get because we see three different inequalities. And side note for the day. I would absolutely make sure that I understand how to do a problem if it was written in this form instead. Now, if we look, this is really the same as saying these two things. We know that if I have a combined inequality, I just look at whatever's on the left and the middle, and that's one of our inequalities. Then I look to whatever's on the right and the middle, and that is our second inequality. Do not be surprised if something like this comes up on our test. Okay, back to the lecture here. My first line is x is less than 6. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh-oh, it is off the chart. Okay, but I'm going to draw my x equals 6. I know it's dashed. Values that are less than 6 are to the left side. So that's really telling me anything over here can work. Just stuff on the right side is not going to work. My second line, my slope is negative 1 and my y-intercept is 4. So I'm going to go up 4 and I'm going to go down 1 and over 1. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and sketch that line. When I put 0, 0 in, I get 0 is greater than 4, which does not work. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my um, line of shading on the opposite side. If these were only two answers, this is where we would shade because that's where the shadings overlap. But unfortunately, we are not done. So I need to look at our third one, which thankfully is in slope-intercept form. So my slope is negative one-half. My y is four. So I'm going to go up four, and then I'm going to go down one and over two, down one and over two. This line is dashed. And when I substitute 0, 0 in, I get 0 is less than 4, which is true, which tells me this side. And if we look carefully, it looks like everything in this little triangle is where the shading overlaps. And if I really wanted to be confident in my answer, I would choose one of these solutions, substitute them into all three inequalities, to make sure that I am correct. Last but not least, number eight. This first equation we know y equals is a horizontal line. Just a good reminder, our slope is zero. On our previous problem, when we had x equals, that was a vertical line. So our slope would be undefined, or we could write it as no slope. Okay, so back to this problem. I'm going to go to y equals two. I'm going to draw a horizontal line. And if I substitute in something like 0, 0, I get 0 is less than 2, which is a true statement. So that means I'm going to shade everything below. For some reason, this next line always confuses us. Okay, this is in slope-intercept form. My slope is 1, my y-intercept is 0. So I'm going to begin at 0 and go up 1 and over 1. It is a solid line because it has this equal to underneath it. I cannot substitute in 0, 0 this time though, so I'm going to substitute in something like 0, 1. Okay, now 0, 1 is right here, so if that works, this would be the area of shading. If it did not work, this would be the area of shading. So let's check. 1 is greater than or equal to 0, that is true. So that means that I would shade on this side, and everything in this triangle would be our solution. So this is really just adding on to what we learned last chapter, the only difference. We have more than one inequality. We need to see where do the shadings overlap.